With the Detroit Lions having officially started their training camp, many people have expectations for the team. But there is one explosive player that's on this team that could join very elite company in 2024. And we're going to talk about it in this episode, folks. So don't you dare go away. What are we? What makes us what we are? And what we're going to be? It's grit. It's what we started with last year, guys. Doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes, I will beat your ass. Can definitely compete with with, with the big dogs. Ten, five, end zone, touchdown Detroit Lions. You guys, you guys are unbelievable, man. I, I'm telling you. We are driven by Detroit. Hello, old Detroit Lions fans, and welcome on back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike, and as always, we're diving on in. So, folks, obviously, training camp has officially started. I am so very excited for it because we're now starting to get news. We're starting to see how our players are actually performing. We're hearing all of these wonderful reports. It's just a great time right now, and I'm sure there's a lot of other fans around the NFL that are actually happy about the fact that their teams are also doing stuff as well, but... It just feels different for us Detroit Lions fans. It's a wonderful thing to actually have football back. It's wonderful to know that, hey, the preseason games are right around the corner, and then shortly after that, we're going to have the regular season games. But I figured that for the first episode of today, I was going to talk about this because, again, I'm always constantly thinking about topics. I'm always constantly thinking about what is going on with our Detroit Lions because there's always something new, there's always a different angle, there's always a different perspective that you can try and come up with for a certain topic. So I started taking a look at our offense because I'm going to tell you this right now. Our offense is one of the most powerful, one of the most deadly in the league. And when it comes to our offense, that is one of the most definitive facts about our team is that our offense is that explosive. It is that dynamic. It is that innovative. I mean, for crying out loud, let's just call it for what it is. The Lions had a top five offense in 2022. In 2023, they had a top three offense. And if you go even further into the statistics, they had the fifth best passing offense for both 2022 and 2023. And then in 2022, they had the 11th best rushing offense. And then in 2023, they moved all the way up to the fifth best rushing offense. So you are talking about an offense that, like I said, it's not only explosive, but it's also balanced because the offense can use the run and the pass to do whatever it needs to do without, with, with pretty much without any transition. There's no real hard ability for it to go from one to the other. Now, the Lions offense is one of the most productive in the NFL because of the fact that it's also one of the most explosive. And when you start taking a look at the amount of explosive plays, I've talked about this in the past, but the Lions, I mean, you take a look at the numbers. In 2022, the Lions had 110 explosive plays. This comes from a guy that works with both PFF and also with the 33rd team. His definition of an explosive play is a play of 10 yards or more on the ground or a play of 20 yards or more through the air. Now, when I'm saying 20 yards or more through the air, and the only reason I'm specifying this is because I had a really interesting um, conversation going back and forth with Easy of Woodward Sports. I am not talking about air yards. I am talking about just yards that were picked up by a ball being thrown. So whether or not the ball traveled 20 yards in the air or it resulted in a 20-yard pickup after the ball was thrown on the ground, I'm not getting into that distinction. I just wanted to make sure I clarified that. But point of the matter is 2022, the Detroit Lions had 110 explosive plays. 53 of them were on the ground, 57 of them were on the air, or through the air, pardon me. And then when you go to 2023, the Lions had 125 explosive plays, 65 of them were through the air, with 60 of them on the ground. So again, even in that, you're seeing there's balance in the amount of explosive plays that the Lions are having, whether it's on the ground or through the air. And so... I decided to explain what an explosive play was, so that way I could then go into this portion here. When you're talking about the amount of explosive plays that the Detroit Lions offense has had over the last two years, we've had 235 explosive plays. That's tied for fourth most in the NFL over that span. 
We've had 122 at pass explosive plays. That's for third most. And we've had 113 rushing explosive plays. That's for eighth most. Again, as we can clearly see, the Lions have not only had a very explosive offense, but again, balance, balance, balance. I'm telling you, this offense has the ability to be very, very special because when you can be both explosive and balanced, as I just demonstrated there, you are going to be able to get so much done because you're not one-dimensional. Now, when you're ranking top 10 in all of those categories, plus you have a top five ranking in two of the categories, you are really going to be able to do just about whatever the hell you want to do on offense. And it's not really hard to understand or see why. Let's just call it for what it is. The Lions have the best offense coordinator in all of football. I mean, Ben Johnson is by far the most highly sought-after coordinator that is in the NFL to become a head coach. The last two years, he has gotten multiple head coaching interviews. There have been a lot of teams that have been trying to, you know, you know, uh, gain his services to become their next head coach. He has rebuffed all those offers, and he has remained here in Detroit, and he remains loyal to both Dan Campbell and to the program that has been started here and all the work that we've been doing. When you take a look at what Ben Johnson has been able to accomplish, like I said, producing two top five offenses over the last two years, with one of them being a top three, I mean, for crying out loud, the proof is in the pudding. Then you move off of Ben Johnson being the best offensive coordinator in all of football. Then you take a look at the actual personnel. The Detroit Lions, we have the best offensive line in the entirety of the National Football League. I don't care what anyone says, and there's very few people that would argue with me on this, but the Lions have what is considered the only elite offensive line in the NFL currently. The Lions offensive line currently features four former first-round draft picks. We have Taylor Decker, we have Kevin Zietler, we have Frank Ragnow, we have Panay Sewell. All four of those guys are former first-round draft picks. That is a lot of damn talent on the offensive line and it shows in our ability for our, for our offensive line to dominate, whether it's in terms of being able to provide pass protection for Jared Goff or whether it's in terms of opening up rushing lanes for our running backs. Our offensive line has proven that it is very capable of being able to do its job and not only capable but flexible in case of injury or something else comes up. And that is a testament to Hank Fraley's ability to lead that unit and to be an absolutely wonderful coach for them. So, that's another component of why our offense is the way it is. But on top of that, we also have a top 10 quarterback. Again, I've said it multiple times, but Jared Goff is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And ever since he came here to Detroit, he has enjoyed a massive, monumental career resurgence. Because when he was traded from the LA Rams, he was left for dead by the Rams. In essence, the Rams were shipping him here for his career to die. But instead of that, Jared Goff became one of the spearheads to turn the Lions into the juggernaut that it is right now. And over the last two seasons, again, much like Ben Johnson, Jared Goff has produced top 10 seasons statistically, with one of those seasons nearly being a top 5 season. It was a fringe top 5 season. He's also guided the team to back-to-back -to -back winning seasons, something that has been very, very difficult for Detroit Lions quarterbacks to do over the years. He's also given us a division title. He's also given us two playoff wins in a row. And Jared Goff helped guide the Lions to an NFC Conference Championship game appearance. Over the time that Jared Goff has been with the Detroit Lions, so since 2021, he has been one of the most statistically productive quarterbacks posting these numbers. He's had the 11th highest completion percentage rate, the 4th most passing yards, the 7th most passing touchdowns, and the 8th highest passer rating. You are, you're going to be very, very hard-pressed to find a quarterback that has been not only this successful in terms of accomplishments, but also in terms of statistical production. And he is a huge reason as to why the offense has been as explosive as it has been. And then there's obviously the receiving talent. We have guys like Amon Ross St. Brown, we have Jamo, we have Laporta, but those are the guys that primarily are the spearhead of our receiving group. They're the main guys. But we also have guys like Donovan Peoples-Jones, we have Khalif Raymond, we have, a, we have a couple of other guys that are really good at what they do. So this is a very diverse but very dangerous group for Jared Goff to throw to and for Ben Johnson to game plan with. That's talking about the entire offense, and that's part of the reason why our offense is so explosive. But when you start taking a look at the running back group, the Lions have by far the best running back duo in the entire NFL. 
I don't think there is a single group in the NFL, the single team in the NFL that has a better running back group, running back duo than the Lions do in David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. Montgomery, he is one of the he is a very very solid back. Like there are very there are a lot of teams that would love to have his services just to be a running back number 1. But the fact that we have two guys that could play the number 1 role is awesome. Think about it. Montgomery last year, he posted, he posted over 1,000 yards running the ball. That was a huge, huge, huge thing for him because he's only think, I think he's only done that one other time in his career. Now, granted, of course, that was when he was playing with the Bears, and the Bears have had one of the worst offensive lines over the last five or six years in the NFL, but whatever. Montgomery is an awesome piece to have, but let's call it for what it is here. The main highlight of that duo is Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs' talent is one is, I'm telling you, it's extremely rare. He has got a talent profile that is very, very hard to find, and it's very hard to find in one individual. He is both elusive as a runner, but he's also a person that can make people move not only with his juke moves, but he has speed like a cheetah, but he also has the ability to catch. He has hands like a wide receiver. This is a guy that has the ability to do it all as a weapon. And when you think about this guy, not only being a deadly runner, but also a deadly threat coming out of the backfield, he is a guy that really has the chance to do something special in 2024. And what I am specifically talking about, it is my opinion that Jameer Gibbs is going to have a good chance, he has a good likelihood to become the fourth player in NFL history to achieve the prestigious mark of having both 1,000 rushing yards and 1,000 receiving yards in a season. Now, I'm going to say this right now. To some people, this might sound absolutely nuts to say, but to others, it might not sound that crazy at all. But for me, I'm one of those that doesn't think it sounds that crazy at all. And I'm going to explain to you why. Because let me actually, you know, explain my thought process. Let's first and foremost Take a look at what happened last year. There's a reason why I explained all the components that I had with the offense first before I started talking about Gibbs. If you take a look at what happened last year, the Lions are virtually bringing back all the pieces that they had last year on offense. The only two exceptions to that rule is that Jonah Jackson and Josh Reynolds are not coming back. The Lions replaced Jonah Jackson with Kevin Zeidler. They have not technically replaced Josh Reynolds. But the reason why they haven't replaced Josh Reynolds, I believe, is because they have already enough talent on the roster in terms of all the receiving options they already have to where they didn't have to go out and get somebody else. This is going to play a huge point into my later argument when I'm talking about this. But let's first and foremost understand this. Take a look at Jameer Gibbs last year. Jameer Gibbs last year was a rookie. So for the first like third of the season, the Lions really did not use him. If you take a look at the first six games that Jameer Gibbs was supposed to have played, and there's a reason why I say supposed to, because two of those games he was injured, take a look at the first six games of production that Jameer Gibbs had. He only had 39 rushes for 179 yards for 4.6 in average a rush. The average is pretty good, but there wasn't a lot of rushes, there wasn't a lot of yards, and he didn't have any rushing touchdowns. On the opposite end, he only had 14 receptions for 70 yards for five on average for no receiving touchdowns. So again, the first six games, Jameer Gibbs really didn't get a whole lot of action for the Detroit Lions. And again, like I said, two of those games, he was injured. So you have very little production from Jameer Gibbs in the first third of the season of his rookie year. But then when you take a look at the last two-thirds of the year, now granted, this is more time, but just look at a comparison of how much more touches, how much more involvement he had in the offense with these stats. For the last two-thirds of the year, Jameer Gibbs had 143 rushes for 766 yards, 5.4 an average a rush with 10 rushing touchdowns. That is a massive amount of involvement change from the first third to the sec for the last two thirds, just in the rushing department alone. But then when you take a look at the receiving component, he had also 38 receptions for 246 yards, 6.5 an average a catch, and also a receiving touchdown. The last two thirds of the games for the 2023 season, Jameer Gibbs became a massive focal point for this offense, whereas in the first third of the season, he was kind of still getting his feet wet. They were trying to work him in, plus the injuries also didn't really help him out. 
But that's my point right there. If you take a look at the first third of the season, the Lions simply were trying to get him acclimated before they kind of threw him in and just, you know, gave him the full Monty, so to speak. But let's also think about this. Last year, Jameer Gibbs almost got 1,000 yards rushing, even though the first third of the season he really didn't play a whole lot. Think about it. He was only short of 1,000 yards last year rushing by 55 yards. That's Let's just call it for what it is. That's not at all of a stretch for him to get 1,000 yards this year. If he didn't play the most, he did, if he didn't play a whole lot in the first six games of the year and he was still only 55 yards short, he should get 1,000 yards, no problem. Unless, of course, he gets injured, he should have no problem getting 1,000 yards rushing. But the problem is, is I'm saying that Jameer Gibbs is going to have both 1,000 yards rushing and 1,000 yards receiving. So some people are like, well, David, you just said that Jameer Gibbs only had 316 receiving yards last year. How do you then explain him somehow tripling his output in receiving yards from last year? Just to kind of put it like Sherlock Holmes, I'm going to say elementary, my dear Watson. There are a couple of things we have to consider here. First and foremost, consider this. Like I said, he only was he only really played as a primary role for about 11 of the freaking, you know, 17 games that he had last year. Unless injury strikes again, Jameer Gibbs is going to get a lot more touches. Jameer Gibbs is going to get a lot more opportunities. And because of that, his numbers should just naturally go up just because of that. That's point number one. And I've been talking about it now for quite a bit. Point number two. Let's take a look at what's been said this entire offseason. Ben Johnson, Jared Goff, Dan Campbell, they have all expressed expanding Jameer Gibbs' role to include more receiver work, such as using him in the slot or using more routes of him coming out of the backfield, whether it's option routes, whether it's Texas routes, whatever the case might be. They have all expressed a want, a desire to get Jameer Gibbs more involved as a receiver because they all can recognize that Jameer Gibbs has extreme talent when the ball is in his hands after the catch. So this enhanced amount of opportunities that they're talking about, that they're planning for Jameer Gibbs, will also increase his production. And then finally, like I just said, from last year, the Lions had Josh Reynolds and they had all the other players that they had. Well, Josh Reynolds is now gone and his former production is now going to be tallied up. It's going to be divided and picked up by other players that are currently here. One of those players is going to be Jameer Gibbs. Now, obviously, guys like Jamo, Sam Laporta, and others are also going to pick up some of that production. But Jameer Gibbs figures to be a person that's going to get some of that production, and that, again, is going to enhance. It's going to increase whatever production he gets on the field. So there's three reasons right there, just at face value, that already show that Jameer Gibbs should have substantially more receiving opportunities and thus more receiving production from 2023 going into 2024. But there are two other notes I want to add here before I end the episode. Let's understand something here. The reason why I'm so confident that, you know, Jameer Gibbs has a chance to do this, take a look at the other three guys that have made this happen, which is, Chris, which is Christian McCaffrey, which is Roger Craig, and Marshall Falk. Take a look at those guys. There is something that all three of those guys share. Number one, all three of those guys had innovative, offensive-minded head coaches, whether they're offensive coordinators or head coaches. For Marshall Falk, it was Mike Martz. For freaking Roger Craig, it was Bill Walsh. And obviously for Christian McCaffrey, it's Kyle Shanahan. Let's take a look at what the Detroit Lions have for Jameer Gibbs. It's Ben Johnson, so there's a win right there. Then you take a look at the quarterbacks that all three of them had. Let's see. Marshall Falk had Kurt Warner, Hall of Famer. Roger Craig had Joe Montana, Hall of Famer. Now, freaking Christian McCaffrey has a good quarterback in Brock Purdy. Way too early to say anything else other than that. But the point of the matter is, is all of them have had good quarterbacks. Who does Jameer Gibbs have? He has Jared Goff. Jared Goff is a top top five to top ten quarterback right now. So again, that's another check mark right there. And the one thing that all three of them also share, they're all West Coast offenses. Hell, freaking Bill Walsh was the originator of the West Coast offense that we have right now. So there's a win right there. Mike Martz, his school comes directly from that. And then also so does Kyle Shanahan. Ben Johnson, his school is a West Coast style offense. So again, it all matches up. And then let's think about this as well. All three of the teams that I just talked about, two times with the 49ers, but also the one with the Rams, there was all a huge amount of different, differing variety of weapons. Pardon me. 
We'll take a look at the Lions. They also have a they also have a huge variety of weapons. Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, Sam Laporta, David Montgomery, Khalif Raymond, da 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 da. It just keeps going on and on. The Lions having this propensity of weapons is going to also help, but there's one other thing that the Lions have that the other teams do not have. The Lions have probably the most speed out of all of the other teams that I'm talking about here. Think about it. Jameer Gibbs is one of the fastest guys in the NFL. Jamison Williams is one of the fastest guys in the NFL, and so is Khalif Raymond. The Lions have three speed demons on their offense. I'm telling you this right now. Just because of the sheer amount of weapons that we have, but also the sheer amount of speed that we have on this offense, plus you have the best offensive line, plus you have Jared Goff, plus you have Ben Johnson. Again, there was a reason I explained all that earlier. It's going to give, again, Jameer Gibbs a huge amount of opportunities to make plays. And one of the best ways that he's going to make these plays and he's going to get a lot of production is the fact that he is so elusive, the fact that he is so dangerous with the ball in his hands after the catch. He's going to become what I would like to call a yak machine. I'm telling you, folks, it's not that far of a stretch when you start considering all these points for Jameer Gibbs to join a very, very exclusive, very elite group in 2024. This is why I think that Gibbs has a chance to become only the fourth player in NFL history to have both 1,000 yards receiving and 1,000 yards rushing. But anyway, having explained all that, having put all the evidence out there, compiled it and made it into a comprehensive argument, I just want to say to everyone, thank you all for watching it, another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, I highly encourage you all to watch the episode I got coming out later, but I also encourage you all to please watch prior content because it helps me out. Also encourage you all to please subscribe to the channel if you subscribed in the past and you forgot to do so at the time, or you just subscribed and not had a chance to do so. Again, please, please subscribe. But I also want to encourage you all, make sure you hit that bell notification icon at the bottom so that you guys never miss any more content that I push out. Also encourage you all to share the content with your Lions friends and family members. Share it here on YouTube. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share anywhere and everywhere you can with everybody and anybody that you can. The more we share it, the greater the channel has a spread, the greater the channel has a reach, and the more we can get people to come in. I just want to say to everybody, I hope you all enjoyed the content. I hope you all are having a good day. hope you all got something that makes you happy, makes you smile. God bless, and until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.